All right, we had a great time at Winfield today, always do. And uh, I appreciate uh, the folks having us out there. We've been going out there for a while, 22 years, something like that. And so it's always uh, been something I look forward to. And I uh, got to see some uh, old friends that have just moved into the home. And that was a blessing. And we had two men that prayed and asked the Lord to save them. And they prayed out loud, which is kind of unique too. From the parade publicly like they did and uh, so again i appreciate them one was a, a i'll say an old marine and did two tours of duty in vietnam and i really appreciate him and our folks that have these pins he's the one that made our pins for us so uh very interesting looking family i get a chance to look at it and so appreciate him and he went ahead and made a decision today to confirm his relationship with the lord so we're thankful for that so thank you for praying for us as we went to the home and uh, excited about the, the time we got to spend. And, and I say home, excuse me, <clears throat> but what it called a, uh, uh, a, a assisted living. Am I saying it right now? Yeah. Okay, assisted living. She works out there and, and folks out there just think she's the greatest thing that ever happened to them out there. So anyhow, that's great. That's good. That's the way it should be. And appreciate people that love their job, especially when they're working with people and they love these senior citizens. So appreciate your prayers again. So I want to share some things that trust be a blessing. And also tonight, we want to pray for George here. He's got some possible surgery tomorrow, depending on what they find concerning his heart. And so he would like for us to pray for him. Uh, tonight at the end of the service and I don't have any oil to anoint you with tonight but we'll go ahead and just gather men together so we can pray for him uh, that everything will uh, come out okay is what we're praying for uh, but either way we want to be prepared for uh, whatever uh, happens and I appreciate his uh, relationship with the Lord that he's got things made right with the Lord and he's got several lines on his schedule here real soon and uh, we'll just see what happens, but tonight, again, we need to be with him as he goes in to uh, uh, Fort Wayne for some procedures tomorrow. And depending on what they find, it could mean immediate surgery, and maybe not. And so again, just uh, pray for George, and he'll appreciate that. Okay, now let's go ahead and get started our message. And I want to talk to you about some things faith in God has done for me. And again, we've mentioned this several times, even today, earlier, we mentioned how that we could all give a good testimony about what God has done for us. And I appreciate uh, just a moment ago when DJ was sharing how that God protected her in a dangerous situation. And uh, and again, how many times has God protected us? And we don't even realize, we don't know that God was intervening in our behalf uh, to take care of us. And how many times we didn't get sick when we could have got a deadly sickness and we didn't because of God's intervention. And so I appreciate God and he's on uh, business uh, on duty all the time and uh, even when we're not aware of it he's doing things for us and again that's the reason it's important for us to pray so uh, pray for our kids on the mission field as they continue to work there as they go back into the, the deep bush uh, that God will protect them and of course many of you know they, they have to deal with the witch doctors and chiefs and people that are just uh, a little different than what we are around here and so we appreciate your prayers for them but if you look here in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, and many of you may have your notes there, and Philippians 1, 6, I love this verse because it says so much about our God. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And folks, we talked and we will continue to talk about the election that's approaching and as we talk about it, I know many of us are concerned, but what, fear, uh, what I fear is the fact that many people think that the, the election is going to take care of a whole lot of problems. And if we get the right man in office, and there's some that believe the right man's in the office right now, and there's others that believe that we need to get somebody else in office, and we can just go on and on about all that. But I, I'm excited because many of us, you know, could you say, are you confident in Biden? Are you confident in Trump? Are you confident, you know, just start naming names and you go, well, not really. And that's what I think most people say, I'm not really real confident with them. But we can always say I'm confident in Jesus. We can always trust him in the things that he does. And notice 
as we look at that verse, says being confident of this very thing, being confident that he's the one, ready? He's taking care of my salvation. He's the one that's taking care of me. He's the one that's protecting me. He's the one that's giving me uh, wisdom, if you please, to do this or do that. And so we can be confident in what he's doing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Folks, I don't know when Jesus is coming, but as I look about, I believe it's got to be soon. And I, I believe it's got to be soon. And when I say it, because of there's just so many things going on, I, I, I can't imagine this, but if it continues to get worse, isn't God going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah for destroying them? Uh, and that's what uh, bothers me when I think of how bad things have gotten. But the Bible said, as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, and as it was in the days of Noah, so will be in the last days. Folks, I think we're there, and if we're not, whoa, he means it's going to get worse. That's uh, even more frightening. But he said clearly, he said, I'm confident that I can trust Jesus, and I'm looking forward to his appearance. And here's the thing, I know, I know that Jesus is coming back. Now, Trump has said he's going to be in office again soon. Uh, I say, you know, within a year. Uh, I don't know that we can really count on him being in office a year from now. And I could go on and on, but we can count on Jesus. We can trust him. And I mentioned this morning, I think it's very important that we make sure that we vote for Jesus in everything that we do. And Hebrews eleven six, 6, it said something else. And again, it talked about some things that faith in God has done for me. And again, as we look at this verse, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. And it's sad how many people are working or doing this and that and everything else, and, and they get religiously involved in various things, and they think if they do enough good works that God said, okay, I'll let you into heaven now because you've done so much good work. Well, we know it doesn't quite work that way. As we look at this verse, it says very clearly, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. So we have to have faith in God. We had that faith in the fact that God loved us so much that he died in our place so we could go to heaven. And so I'm going to heaven not because of my goodness, but because of the goodness of God and because I've accepted what he did by faith. But he says, he goes on and says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. How exciting to think that God wants to reward us. And we can never pay God back for all the things that he's done for us. But to see that he says he wants to reward us. And so that reward can only come if we have a faith in him. Folks, God loves you. And he can and he will take care of you. And many of you could give testimony after testimony of how God intervened. I think several were mentioned to me uh, the message that was brought Wednesday night. Uh, and I appreciate it as Jay shared basically kind of a testimony. He said, then I had nine kids and no job and on and on that he shared these things that happened and how that God supplied need after need after need. And it was so clear that it was God's intervention that God gave him the job that he needed to get put in the right place at the right time over and over again to take care of those needs. And that's what it is, is trusting God to help us because he does, before you even have a need, God knows you're going to have that need. And so it's exciting as we watch him working in our life. But as we demonstrate our faith, then we can expect and know that the rewards of God will follow soon after. And so as we continue in the scriptures, it's exciting as you see that God wants to work in your life, in my life. In Mark chapter 11, notice what it says in verses 22 through 26. Jesus says something that just, it, it's kind of mind boggling what he says here, because it's just, of all the things and illustrations that he could have chose, why did he choose this? But this is what he chose. And Jesus answered and saith unto them, have faith in God. Now, those are the actual words he said. He said, have faith in God. And folks, it's easy to have faith in God when you got money in the bank, when you're feeling good, when things are going the right way, and it seems like you got a few extra friends and, and some other things just seem to be going, everything seems to be going really, really good, and, and you feel good about yourself and everything else. But when things are not going good, and when you've got some health issues, or you got some financial issues, or you've got all of that, and you got some other things, you're misunderstood, and on and on we can go, it's a little harder saying, oh, God is so good. <laughs> Especially when you're looking around you and things don't seem that good. They don't seem that wonderful. But Jesus said this, and again, just this one phrase, have faith in God. So no matter what's happened, 
no matter what's going through your situation, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Folks, have you had any mountains in your life lately? And I, I'm not necessarily talking about mountain top experiences, and maybe some of you have had some of those here in recent days, but has there been something that just got in your way and it's blocked you and kept you from going forward for the cause of Christ? It, it slowed your growth up or whatever. And God says very clearly that no matter what type of mountain we have in the way, that if we have faith, that mountain can be removed. And folks, how exciting it is when we see God moving mountains out of the way for us. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Folks, you might notice these letters are in red, if you have a red print Bible, and it's emphasizing the fact that Jesus is saying these very words that he's being quoted directly. And again, the whole word of God is the word of God, but he's in the word of Jesus. But he says very clearly, if we believe in him, our prayers will be answered. Again, verse 25, and when ye stand praying, forgive. If ye have ought against any that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. And folks, the reason our prayers don't get answered is because too many times we're, we're bitter and we're upset and we're not forgiving others and we won't forget what they did to us. And so we hang on to that root of bitterness. Folks, we got roots. You always have the possibility of something growing from that root. And so it's important to get rid of that, that root of bitterness to get it out of our lives so we can go forward for Christ. And I don't know about you, but I'll be honest with you. I can't afford to not have my prayers answered. And there's times that I pray, ah, it can mean the difference between life and death. It really can. And so we can't say, okay, I'm going to take a vacation from my prayer life. I'm not going to pray anymore. At least for this week, I'm going to take a break because folks, we need to be able to pray at a moment's notice. And not only that, we need to be praying constantly in a spirit of prayer. And what that simply means is that we're in communication with God all the time. And we should be. Then notice what it says in verse 26, but if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. So folks, we can't afford to, to hate somebody. We can't afford to allow bitterness to grow in our life because it, it silences our prayers and our prayers will not be answered because we have a wrong relationship with somebody. And as a result, we have a wrong relationship with God. So it's important for us to make sure we have things in the right place. So that's our introduction for the night. And before we go any further, we want to ask God's blessing on our message tonight. And I know here in a little bit, George will be praying for us. I, I mean, we'll be praying for George, but George, we pray for us now, okay? Father, we come to this evening in prayer. Lord, we do thank you that we're able to be in your house tonight. And Lord, we thank you for the amount of blessings that you bestow upon us on a daily basis that we don't even ask for. You do for so many things that even before we need, know we have a need, you've provided for us. And God, we just want to thank you for that. And Lord, we do want to be attentive tonight and know that you've brought this message to the pastor for a reason. And Lord, we just pray that we can all be attentive and that we get exactly what you have for us. Lord, we do pray to bless this service, bless this, bless this sermon. We ask this all in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother George. And so as we look here, the first point I have is it's very simple. Jesus found me. Hmm. And I, I think if we were to ask, could you give us a testimony about when Jesus found you? And I think there's been a number of songs that have been written here, even in recent days, that talk about where somebody accepted Christ as Savior. And I, I remember one that we used to sing quite often is that it was on a Tuesday that somebody touched me and then it goes on talking about how the Lord touched me and, and you, uh, through the, the song you go, it must have been the Lord or whatever type of language it refers to. But when we think in terms of when did we get saved, that indicates when we got found. Mm -hmm. And something I've learned through the years, and I know it sounds really profound, and I was a Cub Scout and I was a Boy Scout and you know, whatever. Uh, but there was different times that I found people that were lost. And many times there were different ages. I remember one time I was in uh, Irving, Texas, and I noticed a man going through the shoe store 
And uh, I had a brother that worked in that particular shoe store. And as I looked at the man, he, he just had this bewildered look on him. And uh, uh, he just looked lost. You ever seen somebody, they just look lost, you know what I'm saying? And, and so I, I walked over to him and I said, uh, sir, are you okay? Said, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm there with my daughter. And I said, well, that's good. And he said, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I just can't find her. I said, so are you lost? He said, oh, no, no, no I'm not lost. And I, I said, well, where's your daughter at? Uh, I don't know. And the more I talked to him, I found out that he just snuck out of a nursing home all by himself. And he thought his daughter was somewhere there. And, and folks, he was lost and he had no idea that he was lost, even though he didn't know where he was. And so I was glad I was able to help him and uh, turn him back to the home. And, and, and you know, I don't want to say I was turning back to his keepers or whatever. But anyhow, I got him back in the home and he was still kind of confused. But folks, you could tell he was lost. And then I don't know how many times I'd find a, a little child that's kind of roaming through the store. And that always bothers me. You want to, well, what's going on, especially in this day and age, because of things that could happen. And you ask them, are you lost? And they go, no. Well, where's your mommy? I don't know. <laughs> where's your daddy? I don't know. And, and the more you're talking about, this kid's lost, and this kid doesn't even know he's lost or she's lost. But folks, in that true concern of the spiritual realm, how many people we meet, meet that they say, oh, well, I belong to a church. And, oh, I got a, you know, a good relationship with God. And, yeah, God and I are just like this, you know, and they go on and on. And, and when you talk to them, it's like they have no idea that they're lost. I mean, they really don't because maybe they belong to a certain church or whatever, a certain group or whatever, but they don't know that they're lost. And so I'm thankful that Jesus found me. Wow, it's been about wow, 60 years ago that Jesus found me. And it was a strange place, a place called Bamberg Air Force Base in California. Sergeant in the Air Force that led me to Christ, and I wasn't even in the Air Force. But anyhow, but what I'm saying, it's unique how God searches, and if you please, that he wants to help every one of us to find him. And so I can honestly say that Jesus found me. And I got saved, folks, when Jesus found me. When I trusted him as my Savior, it was a wonderful change that took place in my life. Jesus said it's this way, Luke chapter 19, verse 10. And if you have your study guide there, it's printed out for you. It says this, for the son of man has come and to seek and to save that which was lost. You ready? Jesus came to find me. Oh, excuse me. Jesus came to find you. <laughs> he came to find us. And how exciting. And especially when you go, wow, he found me. He found me. I'm so thankful that I have a God that loved me so much that even when I was lost and I didn't know I was lost, he helped me to find that I was lost and that I needed to be found and he was ready to find me. And how exciting it is to know Jesus Christ as the founder of our salvation. When we look at the scriptures again in Romans 3.11, it clearly shares with us how important it is for us to get saved and yet, how oftentimes it's something we just don't fully understand because, well, we're not Christians yet before salvation. There is none that understand it. There is none that seeketh after God. So our natural tendency is to stay lost. It's to stay out there away from God. And, and we, we just, you know, do our own thing, so to speak. And that is a very dangerous place to be. And Satan will do all he can to distract us, to keep us to, from being found by the Lord himself. And then in Luke, Chapter 15, verse 24, again, help us understand what we're trying to share with you, the importance of being found. It says, for this my son was dead and is alive again, and he was lost and is found, and they began to be married. And again, this is concerning the story of the prodigal son. And as I shared with you, I had a, a teacher back in California, uh, in Lompoc, California, and he just simply, uh, he was... He was a agnostic, basically, and uh, he had fun with this particular scripture because he said, uh, now don't get the wrong idea. He said, I still don't believe in Jesus, and I still don't believe in that Bible stuff and everything, but he said the story of the prodigal son is the most perfect short story ever written. And I thought that was pretty neat coming from this guy, not even a Christian, and, and he would admit, yeah, I'm lost, <laughs> you know, and uh, wouldn't make any bones about it. But what I'm trying to say is it's a wonderful story about how a boy got lost, but then he got found. And so exciting that we can trust God to help us. And then 
when he got found, what happened? Everybody, oh, we found him again. Now we got to take care of him. <laughs> there was excitement. There was a party. Uh, there was a thrill. I, I love when we baptized last Sunday night. A uh, number of people after the man was baptized, they just began laughing and sort of happily shouting, you know, and going, hey, man, where you going? Where you going? You know, whatever. And I think that's exciting. Uh, and we should be excited when people are brought into our family. So again, Jesus found me. And then something else that Jesus did for me and something that he does for us, Jesus fixed me. Mm-hmm. And again, it's one of those situations a lot of times where we don't know that we're having any problems. I remember uh, Sean, when Sean went in to see the doctor and he wasn't really concerned about anything in particular, but then the doctor, when he started checking Sean out, and you know Sean, he looks as healthy as a horse. He works for the city. He, he has, uh, he's working three jobs, but anyhow, I guess he's down two now. Or is he still working three? Oh, there you are. He's good. Two. Working two jobs yeah, now. Well. And he, the doctor simply said that he had the widowmaker. So in other words, he could have died just at any time. But God, if you please, he got in at the right time and he got his, his heart plumbing, so to, fix, uh, so to speak, fixed. Okay. But here's what I want to emphasize is the fact that Jesus fixed me. Because as we talk about the physical heart and the needs of the physical heart and and how it can be a a death situation if our heart has some plumbing problems or whatever, folks, is a bigger problem if our heart has a spiritual need. And so many times, folks, uh, you know what would fix this world? I'm saying, say, well, Trillions and trillions of dollars. No, several have tried to prove that already. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be working too good. It's never enough, is it? And someone else might say, what the world needs now is love, sweet love, and not just something. <laughs> you got to know about saying, well, I still don't. But anyhow, I, the point I'm trying to get across, what does it need? Well, I'm glad you asked that, that question. It needs to have a fixed heart. People need to get their heart right with God spiritually. And that will take care of all the problems that this world has if they'll give their heart to Jesus and let Jesus take over in their lives. That'll take care of all of our financial problems. That'll take care of all of our wars. That'll take care of all of our But simply, Jesus wants to fix us. And he can fix us if we'll yield ourselves to him. Listen to what the scripture says in Psalms 57 and 7. And I think this is an exciting verse, very unique verse, because it says, my heart is fixed. And, and what a blessing if you get your heart fixed. And what a blessing to have it fixed and know that it's okay. But again, it goes on, oh God, my heart is fixed. So he emphasized the fact, hey God, thank you. You fixed my heart. You, you made it right. And folks, have you ever seen somebody that just had a bitter heart? And, and ever caught somebody that sensed that they had a, a, a bitterness or a sadness to them? And you can look at them and go, they really do have a heart problem. And Jesus can fix that heart problem, whatever it might be. And folks, I don't know if you've ever had a broken heart. And I know there's a lot of songs in that, and I won't try to sing any of those tonight, okay? But uh, God can help you with a broken heart. And, and we can go on and on. He wants to fix us, but you ready? It's like, Mom, we need to take the car to the mechanic. You need to get it fixed. And, and then later on, say, Mom, we need to take the car to the mechanic. You need to get it fixed. And, and you know, and finally, my wife said, Well, have you taken it to the mechanic yet? No, I haven't taken the mechanic, but we need to get the mechanic, get it fixed. Go, Honey, what is wrong with you? Go get it fixed. Take it to the mechanic. And folks, I'm afraid that too many times we go, well, yeah, there's some problems in my heart, and I'm having some spiritual problems. And folks, Jesus is our spiritual mechanic, if you please. He's our, our spiritual physician that we need to see him so that he can fix our heart. You, you know what? I've never had this happen before. I've never had a mechanic that when he heard my car and how it sounded, you know, I never had him come running out the street. Mister, mister, there's something wrong with your car. Let me. <laughs> I never had that happen. Now I've gone in and sometimes I had him run out the back door when I heard my car. But anyhow, what I'm trying to say, Jesus wants to fix us. But if we don't surrender to him, he can't fix us the way we need to be fixed. And so I'm so thankful that we have a wonderful God in Psalms 112, verse 7. It says, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Got any bad news? <laughs> uh, let me rephrase it. Have you gotten any good news lately? You know, 
We had a lady in here and she was real excited this morning. She said, look at my grandbaby, look at my grandbaby. And she was really excited. That was Patty. She was excited. She said, I got a grandbaby. And she showed it a beautiful little girl. So, uh, but what am I trying to say? Well, what I'm trying to get across is the fact that no matter what troubles we might have, Jesus can help us. And even though we get evil and bad news, Jesus wants to help us and he can help us. And it's amazing how he can take bad news and turn it into something wonderful. And I'm so thankful that we have that type of God because, and it simply, it makes it very clear. How do you fix your heart? Ready? By trusting in the Lord is what it says. So trust in the Lord in every situation that you see. Trust in him and he will carry you through. And then something else. Jesus, he forgave. And folks, there's things that I would never want you to know uh, about my life, things that I've done that I shouldn't have done and, and I could go on and on, but I'm not. But what I'm saying, we all have things that we're ashamed of because we're all sinners. But isn't it nice to know that no matter what you've done, Jesus is ready to forgive you. He's ready to, if he pleased, to give you a clean slate. He's ready to help you, to give you a new start. He's ready to help you so that you don't have to constantly go, why did I do that? What was I thinking? What, you know, and instead of just dreading over what you've done or, or trying to take care of the problem that you created because you weren't right with God at that time. He forgave me. By forgiving me, I can look forward to going to heaven, even though I deserve hell. He says it this way in Psalms 103, verse 3, and you have that verse printed there. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, and again, iniquities referring to our wickedness, who healeth all thy diseases. Folks, how many times have I heard somebody say something like this? Why did God allow that baby to die? Why did God allow that war to break out in Ukraine? And why did God allow the Hamas to do what they did there in Israel? Why did, you know, and we just start naming all these things. Why are all these terrible things happening? Why did COVID come about? Why did, you know, and why did so-and-so die? Why did, you know, and we just start, what type of God would allow that to happen? The God is love. But folks, all those things happen because of our sin. Let's go back to the garden. Adam and Eve were given the ability to choose to follow God or to follow the devil in their flesh. And they chose to follow the devil. And when they chose to follow him, that brought death, that brought sickness, that brought misunderstandings, that brought war. And we could just go on all the things that came from them letting the devil become the usurper and accepting his plan over God's plan. Remember, what did he tell him? He said he liked them right at the very beginning. He said, God knows that when you partake of this fruit that you become like the gods, <clears throat> knowing good and evil. And wow, talk about a disaster. But I'm so glad that God forgave them of their sin and that he will forgive us of our sins also if we'll ask him to. Ephesians chapter one, verse seven and who we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins accordingly to the riches of his grace. I'm so glad that God forgives. Let me just ask a simple question kind of answer, but what would you pay for forgiveness? What's the worst thing that you've ever done? And then please don't, you know, don't tell me, okay, don't tell them, I don't want to hear it. But what's the worst thing that you've ever done? And, and, and if you could take care of it and, and completely absolve it, so to speak, and make it so that it never happened, what would you be willing to pay to get rid of that? Everything I got and more. What, but, 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 wait, Jesus will forgive me for that. If we we'll accept that wonderful gift of forgiveness from him. How exciting it is that we can trust him, that he will forgive us so much that it's to get what we deserve. We get heaven because of God's love for you and for me. And then Jesus freed me. And we'll stop here tonight on this part, but notice as he freed us, I'm so thankful. And John 8, 32, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And it's something that we've used in our RU program. 
And it's been exciting watching people becoming free from whatever addiction they have. I remember one man back a number of years ago, and uh, he's now a trustee in our church. But I, I remember him looking at me, he was kind of troubled. And he had had a problem with drug addiction and so forth for a number of years. And he just looked at me and he, he just said, Preacher, I, I, I'm getting a little worried. And I thought, man, he's been doing so good. Why is he getting worried? And I said, you are, what's, what's wrong? And Brother Chuck was teaching the class at the time. And he said, I, and he was just a serious me. He said, I think I'm getting addicted to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I looked at him and I said, that's the whole plan of our, our program here at our church is to get you addicted to Jesus. He said, so that's a good thing. And then I took him to the scriptures where it talked about those that were addicted to Christ and to serving his servants. And he went, oh, good. I said, yes, that's good. And uh, it was so neat because he was so, uh, like a better word, he was just so innocent and he he was so fearful because he was, he said, oh, I can make it with Jesus and how to please him. And I thought, wow, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I mean, it is what God can do. But he got that freedom from those drugs. And I thought it was neat. He even brought in, uh, the people that were supplying him with his drugs, he brought them to our RU program here. It was exciting. I got to go to court with one of them to kind of help them uh, with their situation. But anyhow, what I'm trying to say, that he can free us from whatever it is that holds us back so we can have a better relationship with God. Romans 8, 36. Notice what it says in his word. It said, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free." Indeed. And folks, I'm so thankful that Jesus freed me from the chains of sin. And you know, what's so amazing is that Jesus has the key for our life. He has the key to our happiness. That if you please, the key to, to joy, the key to love. And, and, and then we sit there and we're, we're just chained up. We just please uh, with the, the various sins and things that are binding us. And we just, oh, it's so terrible. What should I do about it, Jesus? <laughs> And Jesus got a key. And, and, and finally, go, oh, Jesus, can you free me from this? <laughs> and it's like Jesus said, I'm just waiting for you to ask. Here's my tricks. Isn't it sad? Isn't it sad how dumb we are sometimes? And uh, anyhow, I'm so glad that God wants to help us and meet the needs in our lives. So some things faith in God has done for me. Wow. Uh, I can't begin really to start with all the wonderful things that he's done for me. But we'll have to, like I said, stop there for right now. Maybe later on we can come back and finish that. But Jesus has done a lot. He's done a lot for me. And again, when we think of our faith in him, we can always trust him. And it's so sad that so many times we, we think, well, if I could see this doctor, this doctor can help me with this problem. If I could see this counselor, this counselor can I heard that they've had great success in their counseling. Or, or if I could see this financial counselor, he could really help me with some of the, the financial needs that I have in my life. Or if I could see, and, and we think of all these people, but folks, really, Jesus can help us with every one of those problems that I mentioned. You ever been somewhere and you need help and you go there and the clerk says, oh, draw a number, we'll get to you. <laughs> You know, you draw a number and you wait and you wait and find they try to get you out just as fast as they can, just so they can say they did their job or whatever. But you can tell they're not really that interested in you or your situation. And it's sad. There's so many people out there that way, the counselor or whatever. You say, well, if you knew what they had to go through, you would understand better. You wouldn't be so callous on that white preacher up there. But I can honestly tell you that no matter what your problem is, Jesus is always ready to help you. But you gotta let him. You gotta trust him. You gotta put your faith in him. Let him take care of it. Give him that opportunity. And it's so sad. So many people refuse salvation because they're like, well, I can find something. This is too easy. I can find something else. There's something else I can do. It's just too easy. And they'll do everything else, but actually get saved. Wow. Uh, reminds me of the, the, the guy that came named Naaman that came to be healed of his leprosy. And he was ready to do anything else but go bathe seven times in the Jordan River? No way, no way. And his servant said, just humble yourself and go do it. And he got healed, wow. So we're always looking for something else to 
do. But Jesus, trusting him, it should be easy. He's our creator. We should be ready and willing to trust him to help us with whatever we're facing. And folks, you ever have counselors say something like this? I know what you're going through. I know what you're going through. And, and I think, do you really know what I'm going through? <laughs> and, and, and they're saying it to try to be helpful, to try to, you know, make you think, oh, oh they, they, they understand. But folks, Jesus really does understand exactly what you're going through. And he has the answer for your problem, for your situation, if you'll trust him. So some things that faith has taught me. Well, that's something that I shared with you just now. But uh, it's important to note that you're ready for heaven. And so if you've never trusted Christ as Savior, we want you to pray a simple childlike prayer to say, Dear God, please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and become my Lord and Savior. It's that simple. I prayed that, like I said, 60 years ago. And guess what? I'm still saved. <laughs> it's amazing how long that works. And I got to guarantee it. It's from God. <laughs> you can trust him completely. And so if you've never prayed a prayer, please do so. Like I said, it was so good hearing those men praying today, asking the Lord to come into the heart. One was a Catholic who was 100 years old. Isn't that neat? Uh, but if you would, would you stand to your feet right now? Lord, thank you again for this time we can come together and study your word. And help us, Lord, to, to understand how important it is to have faith in you. And how that we can trust you in every situation and that we need to trust you in every situation. Lord, help us that as we exercise this faith that we'll do what we can to share it with others to help them see the importance of having faith in you. Lord, thank you that we can look forward to an eternity in heaven by simple faith. And what a tremendous mountain that is. Uh, to, to cast all of our sins upon you and let you take care of them so that we can look forward to eternity without sin. Wow. Look forward to an eternity in a perfect body. Look forward to eternity in a perfect place with perfect neighbors and perfect housing, perfect leadership and government. Lord, thank you for all the things that you do for us. Help us to grow our faith in a way that would bring honor to you. In Jesus' precious name we pray.